Welcome back to another episode of The Jaily Show. Now, this show is an important one. It's one to put in your diary, save on your apps, and make sure you keep coming back to. Because this week, we don't have any old guest. No siree, Bob. We have the man, the myth, the legend, attorney at law. Okay, that last one might not be true. Mr. Mason Carter. Mason is a creative producer here at GL Pro UK, but has a long and storied career of what he's been doing before he joined this bunch of reprobates. He's a podcaster, he's worked in film, he's been a freelancer. Danny Boyle is still talking about the time he got to work with him. Probably. Uh, so check it out. Thank you for all your comments. Please hit like and subscribe and all those words that people say every single time on a YouTube video. But most importantly, enjoy the show and check out Mr. Mason Carter. And we are live! Yes, we are live, and there's two of us this week, as you can see. Um, so this week, we're going slightly different, as we said in the intro. What? There hasn't even been an intro. You're live. Don't worry. I'm going extremely meta here. Um, this is the wonderful Mr. Mason, who works at GL Pro as a creative producer. Um, Mr. Mason Carter, everyone. Hi. Hello. This is different. <laughs> Not expected, no. but uh, I'm happy to be here. Hi, guys. <laughs> this is him looking happy. Um, so, uh, reason for the sudden change of Mason stepping up and sitting down in the big chair this week is we did have a show booked with the awesome Stu Whiffin. However, he is a hero. He is a hero beyond hero and currently is dealing with a lot of red tape and logistics of getting a great big, uh, wonderful truck full of aid over to the Ukrainian border. So, uh, Stu, you're the man. It's absolutely the best reason for not showing up to a live show we've ever heard. And if you need anything, as I said beforehand, get in touch. And he will be on eventually. He will be coming. <laughs> exactly. The, the when he gets show, back, when he gets come back. on. Exactly. Yes. There you go. <laughs> so, who is Mason? Good question. Um, Mason is the producer of the Jaily Show. So I don't even know how we're live right now. He's doing some sort of magic um, here. He could just end the broadcast as we're talking. Apparently, um, Mason's been working at GL Pro for the last six months. Six months. Well, yeah, yeah. Gone quick. And gone real quick. And um, yeah, so let's get into a little bit. Like, what were you doing beforehand? So yeah, before this, I before I even moved to Surrey, it was uh, me in Norwich in the East Coast um, since uh, graduating uni, doing film and television. Uh, I've just been videographer, freelancer, doing the odd bits and pieces here and there, just learning and expanding my knowledge on all things video production, really. And why a move from freelancer to come work with an agency? Very good question. Thank you. Sir. Uh, the... I do this every other week. <laughs> It really, it was the pandemic, man. It was just uh, being stuck in the same four walls. Work was coming in, but also running out at the same time. And I just realized how lonely it was. And just, just, just being a one man band, it just soon got quite real and quite scary. And I just miss being part of a team. Mm. So um, I think a lot of people went through it, though. I mean, we're seeing right now that there's like a resignation pandemic happening across yeah. most businesses. Every business I speak to, people are messaging me and being like, so I'm leaving. I'll be here next. Um, but it's happening to everywhere, right? And I think we all just managed to take or had to take a, a bit of stock of ourselves and look at things over 18 months of being like, hmm, is this what I want to do? Is this mm. what I'm looking to do in the future? <laughs> if if so, how do I want to do it? <laughs> exactly. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. If there's something really that you're generally passionate about and you has just given you the kick up the backside to go and do it, then by all means. But at the same time, everyone's, I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> but it's that mad, is what I'm yeah. seeing people do. People are going and doing what they want to do. Like every, every time I hear someone moving into a new thing, I'm like, that? You're going and doing that? Yeah. Huh. And it's like, oh yeah, I've always loved baking. I've always wanted to be a butcher. I'm stuck in the bees, but <laughs> but people seem to be doing it, you know, not necessarily what they were having to do for survival or mm. like what they were doing beforehand is just a role. Now it's a case of after doing that for 18 months, being like, cool, if I can work this hard at that, or even for, and for the people who are furloughed, right? Yeah. Tons of people who sat twiddling thumbs and being like, when this stops. I don't, I don't want to necessarily go back and do what I was doing. Exactly, exactly. So what was it like freelancing, right? Because I've, I've never done it. Um, you were shooter, director, editor, the whole thing. Oh, just everything. All the hats, constantly like Mr. Ben, just <laughs> changing all the time. Um, yeah, for the first, like, say, year or so, um, it was quite fun. And just getting, I mainly fell into it because I was getting out of, 
a job I wasn't enjoying mm. and it was something I knew I wanted to get into this more. I wanted to put the time in the effort because yeah. the other job was taking me out of it. And I thought I was losing my steam and just, so, um, well, it's a problem when you do something creative, Yeah, do something creative. <clears throat> I remember when I first started playing guitar, my uncle Andrew was like, cool. And what's the job going to be? Mm. Just as a backup, I know you're going to be the biggest rock star on the planet, but let's stick a job in the back. So, you know, yeah. Just as a plan B, and you could do that while the music's happening. I was like, okay, Uncle Andy. Yeah. <laughs> but it's how many people then does that take over? Mm. It took, you know, I didn't do any, I didn't do anything in music, and I was sure I was going to. I just yeah. didn't do anything in music. I was in customer service for like eight years. <laughs> mm. um, but amazing that you already took the step to get out of it and do, be doing freelance anyway. Yeah. But it doesn't seem like the easiest industry to move into. There's so many creative people I know, but everyone I speak to is like, I can't get into an agency. No, it's uh, like all, <laughs> all the knowledge, all the tech, all, like everything is constantly evolving mm. and you're just struggling to keep on top of everything, be in the know of everything. And just uh, but at the same time, it's really fun. You just need to uh, you like that kind of thing. give it a chance. And uh, <laughs> yeah, if you like that. <laughs> So then, what's it like then moving then from uh, one man band mm. to many, many people? Big old band. bands. Mm. <laughs> what's the difference in that then? Well, you got everyone here, mm. creative, but also just different. They come from different mindsets. Mm. So if you've got a great idea, you bounce it off the others, you can tweak it. It just becomes a bigger and better thing. But the things that we worked on internally here and also things for clients. We're now to bounce it around and just uh, have that more collaborative space. That's what I love about working here. Mm. Just, uh, yeah. That's very exciting for me to hear because like I, only reason I want to make a collaborative environment is because I don't know how to do any of the stuff mm. and I want to be involved. <laughs> <laughs> but ever since you started, right, I didn't have a background in video or audio. Or, um, and it's a, I love those conversations when mm. you guys talking about lenses or audio fixes or what the best mic is and stuff or how to shoot it, the lighting. You know, we're fiddling around with lighting to get it right today. Like, I love that. I think it's also cool because it's a totally alien ang language to me. Yeah, <laughs> and I love watching it all happen. It's it, it's it's kind of nice to me because I can throw in the layman's point of view. Mm. And I remember that from from playing music loads. Uh, when you could, I, when, as soon as you could play quick. <laughs> yeah wicked one do it all the time i remember people coming up and being like ah mm. I, but and i knew that was like technically it was freaking amazing but when you stood and bent a note for like eight bars <laughs> people were like he can play man <laughs> he can play and it's i think it's nice to add in like the the end user the audience kind of perspective to be like don't get it like yeah. i know that you guys have all been this close to it and you can see it and it's all really cool but i it's just going to fly straight over my head and I'm not even going to see it. Kind of thing. Yeah, it's just, even just ideas in my head sound really cool. And then I say them out loud and then it's like, well, that's a stupid idea. Why do you say that? Oh, I've, like, I've never had that. No, never... <laughs> we never had stupid ideas that we actually turned into a great idea. And All right, then. So, we get into that? so top three <laughs> stupid ideas that you've done here in the last six months. I mean, does today count? Does this count? Yeah, this is counts. This, Number, this, this is the third. Having me on here. <laughs> but, um, well, we can talk about a stupid idea that you had and turned into a good idea, which was... Um, <laughs> GL Pro UK. No, no. <laughs> uh, we did a video called Content Counseling for Jay's LinkedIn not too long ago. Um, and it was a throwaway line when we were just spitballing ideas. Um, we said, oh, well, Valentine's is coming up. What if we put like Jay into, into some sort of rom-com or some, something like that? And it's like, yeah, you could put me into like Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I love that movie. And Which is so embarrassing because no one likes that movie. <laughs> I, I really don't like it. Oh, yeah, especially now. <laughs> especially now. <laughs> now. You had to watch a lot of it. I had to rewatch it. For this. And the only reason I like that movie so much is because Doug Lyman, the director, also did The Born Identity, which is great. And mm. has the same aesthetic ish. It's just the writing for one is by Robert Ludlum, <laughs> and the other one is, uh, you know, the rom com version. <laughs> and not as good. But I just love that. I just love it. <laughs> I've always thought that movie's great. <laughs> anyway, we decided to put Jay into those opening scenes. If you ever watched it, um, Brad and Angelina, they're at couples counseling, mm. couples therapy. But you never see the therapist, you never see the counselor, you just, uh, it's just them. You just hear the 
the guy off camera. Um, so we thought that was a perfect way to put Jay into the movie. We uh, sit you up onto a green screen, that green screen wall right there, mm -hmm. just off, off shot. But, um, and we made it work. It yeah. was something I, I'd never, well, I had done green screen at uni very basically and very, it's mm. just, I'll look back at it now and I just cringe. Um, and I just wanted that challenge. I wanted to see, okay, that's something that I did. And what was the oh, challenge? So Get, being able to put a, a shot into the same aesthetic, the same lighting tone as the film that we're putting it into? A lot, a lot of challenges actually came with it. Because there's the lighting, you need to get the lighting on the day, like the green screen right, you correctly. Mm. So when we are putting it in with the footage and taking out the backdrop, it's all going to match up. For those of us, up. you know, at the it's... back who don't know what things are, yeah. you have to light the green. Yeah, so you have to light the green, green? Yes. What? Well, also because we can light you and then that could project loads of shadow on the green screen. And why is that a problem? Because when you take that's adding more shades of green into the backdrop. And when you want to key it out, you want it to be all one flat, vibrant green. So like when I used to, to use paint yeah. and I wanted it all to be white so I can click fill all. Yeah. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.